here is my official, you can sing with me, one. Okay, so you need to sing with me. This is a brand new gratitude song. You've heard my other one, but this is a new one. So there's three parts to this, three parts. It goes like this, first part. Thank you. So you can think about thanking mothers. Thank you, fathers and everybody today. Thank you. towards today. Mothers, grandmothers, everybody. I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes, but just think about what you're grateful for today and say, I promise in Keep that gratitude going, shall we? I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. 
for all that I have. Yes, I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. That's the whole chant right there. Sing with me now. I am so blessed again. I am so blessed. I'm so grateful. I am so grateful for all that I have, for all that I have. So blessed. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. Yes, I am so blessed. Sing it out now. I am so blessed, so blessed. I am so blessed. Grateful. I am so grateful for all that I have, yes. I am so blessed, I am so blessed. I am so grateful, I am so blessed. Bring it into a prayer now. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful. All that I have, yes, I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. Just that last line. I am so grateful, yes, I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so And before Karen begins to sing um, and, and, and share from her heart, um, she's asked me to share this video. Listen, 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 listen. A woman feels her power when her voice is being heard. A woman feels her power when her voice is being heard. So listen, 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 listen. A woman feels her power when her voice is being heard. A woman feels her power when her voice is being heard. So the earth listen. will be healed by the women of the world. The listen. earth will be healed by the women of the world. A so woman feels listen. her power when her listen. voice is being heard. A woman feels listen. her power when her voice is being heard. So listen, are the healers. Listen, are the wise. Listen, are the healers. Listen, are the So the earth will be healed by the listen of the world. The earth will be healed by the listen of the world. A woman feels her power when her voice is being heard. A woman feels her power when her voice is being heard. A woman feels her power when her voice is being heard. So the earth will be healed by the listen of the world. The earth will be healed by the listen of the world.
listen. I, I heard you singing along there with me. I appreciate that very much. I love that. So let's hear it for all those wonderful women that were singing with me. Wasn't that great? Those are all posi, positive message musicians, all my, my wonderful women singer songwriter friends that joined me on that one. I love my friend Jan Garrett, who for some reason, <laughs> I don't know what motivated her to go out in the snow and sing this. But when I asked her, it's like, why, you know, what you took your, your music out there to listen and to sing. And she said, I just wanted Mother Earth to be represented. So she's out there freezing, singing that song. So a woman feels her power when her voice is being heard. So listen, you know, and that's what I am all about right now is just listening to my heart, listening to the world. Listen, listen, listen. And today is Mother's Day. And yay for anyone who's a mother so I want to, before we, before I launch into some of the things I'm going to talk about, I want you to raise your hand to the screen. If you are a mother, a stepmother, grandmother, great grandmother, anybody out there? Oh yes. Great grandmother. If you have mothered a child or mothered a friend or an animal, so you don't have to raise your hand for this. I'm just going to make this a list for the men who have nurtured children. So, you know, one of the things about my talk today is that we are all mothers. We are all mothers because we all nurture in different ways. But I, I, want to, um, I want to give voice. I want to, first of all, celebrate all the mothers and all that you do. And I hope you're treating yourself well today. And I hope other people are treating you well. And if they're not, go out and give yourself some roses and a glass of wine. But I want to also acknowledge something, that this is also a painful day for people. And, you know, just to say happy Mother's Day and then we're done with it. I would like to just take just a moment to acknowledge, I got this idea from my friend Sark. I call it the Other's Day, Other Day. So it's, it's Mother's Day, but it's also Other Day. And the Other Day is this. We are going to acknowledge in our minds and hearts right now, anyone who, um, has, who, wasn't, who wasn't a mother, but always wanted to be, um, for mothers who wanted to have children and couldn't, for anyone who has lost a mother or never had one present in their lives. I would always be so amazed, you know, I would go to a, a store and they'd, they'd say, oh, you know, are you going to send your mother flowers? And, you know, I didn't want to stop in that moment and say, my mother is not here anymore. Stop making me feel terrible about this everywhere I go. Um, for anyone on this day that this is painful for any reason, for any reason. For anyone who uh, helps mothers doing their mothering, for all the grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, siblings, friends who have helped the mothers in mothering, and for everyone who on this day, it is a celebration. We acknowledge you and we acknowledge all the emotions that come with this day, the good and the hard and the bad, whatever it is, that it's all just, it's all part of the tapestry of this day. So we acknowledge it all. So yes, for mothers who have lost a child, I have a friend that just, you know, last year, her, her very healthy 25 year old just went like that. And so she said, you know, so today to reach out to her and just say, I'm thinking about you on this day. You know, so much of our society is built on, you know, that this is this big holiday, but it's painful for some people. So I just simply wanted to acknowledge that. So do you know, I did my research like a good little girl, do you know that Mother's Day began as a cry for peace by Julia Ward Howard in 1870? And she was the person who wrote the Battle Hymn of the Republic. See, I'm going to give you information here, very important information. And she was upset by the war. And she knew that in her heart that peace was so important and that who was going to take us there? Women. The women were going to take us to peace. And so she lobbied for this to be a holiday. And it became a national holiday in 1914. And the, the big summoning quote that she used was, and then rise up women on this day, arise all women who have hearts. So maybe that's why Mother's Day, we always have all these hearts going around. But we can thank Julia Ward Howard for that. So I was very lucky to have a wonderful mother. 
um, you know, and see, you know, feel free to do this. I love this. This is one of the things I love about Zoom. Feel free um, to write in the chat how you're feeling today and some of the things like grandmothers who have lost their granddaughters, you know, hugs to you, Karen, dear one. Um, everyone's mother who's deceased, whatever it is, just write in the chat if you just need to just let us see that and, and, and hold you in this today. But as I said, I was very lucky. I had a wonderful supportive mother. Um, my mother encouraged me so much. And I wanted to just share with you, you know, I, I had written this whole talk. And then all of a sudden, I realized, you know, what I want to really talk about is what was planted in me from my mother. But you know, before I go into that, one other thing, I want to also acknowledge the different people who have mothered you in different ways that maybe your mother couldn't, that you picked up those seeds, those ways of being nurtured from people that, um, that really were like second mothers, you know, and I'll just tell you a few personal stories. I, I, some of you might know about this, but I don't know if you do, that when I was 15 years old, Carol King, uh, the singer songwriter moved on to my street in Laurel Canyon, where I grew up in Hollywood. And she had two young children. And I was the babysitter for all the kids on the block. And I'm 15. I'm a geek. I, you know, I'm just a drippy, nerdy kid. And, you know, I just, I was the babysitter for all the kids on the street. And I just knocked on her door and said, do you need a babysitter? And she said, yes, I do. And she became like my second mom when I was 15, 16, all the way up until I left for home, for left for college. And what's really amazing is that she had that mother energy towards me that my mom couldn't do. Like she was the one who talked frankly about sex. She was the one who um, taught me how to drive a stick shift. But most importantly, she was the person who got me into music. She was remodeling her house at one point and she knew I wanted to do music, but I had no talent. I wasn't doing music at all in my life. And I came home one day and her piano was in my bedroom. She needed a place to store her piano for, for what was supposed to be six months. And it turned out to be like a year and a half. And because of that, that's why I do music. And so even though she is not in my life anymore, on this day, I always in my heart acknowledge her because if it hadn't been for her, and I think maybe spirit might have had something to do with this meeting, I don't know. But if it hadn't been for her, I would never be doing what I'm doing today. And I remember when I first started, I was really terrible. I mean, I was writing these little teenage angst songs and I was just, I couldn't sing my way out of a paper bag. And she said, if you write your own songs, it doesn't matter how well you sing. She said, look at me, look at Bob Dylan. And I went, oh, okay. And so I started writing these songs and here I am so many years later, but because of her nurturing me in that way and seeing something in me, she even took me to get my hair cut like hers. I mean, I looked just like her. I looked more like her than any of her daughters did. But I acknowledge her. I acknowledge my sister for the ways that she nurtured me. And now I have a wonderful mentor in my life, um, a woman by the name of Rachel Naomi Remen. Some of you might know her. She has written these wonderful books, My Grandfather's Blessings and Kitchen Table Wisdom. And when I'm with Rachel, she's got that, that nurturing energy to me of being a mentor and, you know, giving, giving me that mother energy that I don't have anymore. So it's just, you know, I want to just take that time today to just look at that. It might not have come directly from your mother for whatever, for whatever relationship you had, you got what you needed from other people. Somehow other people, maybe with spirits help came along in your life to, to give you those seeds, those, those, those little parts of who you are, what you needed at that time. But my mother taught me some great lessons that I'd like to share with you. And they're lessons that I, I have in my life right now that are just so important. And it's in the most subtle ways that she demonstrated this to me. And the first one that I think is the most important is being present. You know, my mom was a working mom and she was very busy. She worked from home. She had a magazine that she was the editor for. And yet she would stop. She would literally stop everything she was doing as soon as I came home and would just sit with me. And our ritual every day was she would stop 
that maybe she even had a glass of wine. I don't know. Maybe there was another perk in this for her, but um, I would have my Oreo cookies and milk. And she would just say, how was your day? And really listen to me. And, you know, at 13 years old, you're just bouncing all over the walls with everything. Well, this person didn't like me. And I got in a fight with this one. And this boy's really cute. And, and I would just like gab on. But I never felt her check out. I never felt her. I never felt like she needed to get back to work. It could just speed it up. And what that taught me at a very early age was the gift, the extreme gift of being listened to. Do you agree? Do you find that when someone really listens to you, it's like just, yeah, Connie, the most beautiful lesson you can, you can, I mean, the beautiful gift you can give them. And, you know, I just uh, finished a six week women's group um, uh, talking about Julia Cameron's new book called The Listening Path. So may I suggest that to any of you, because it was a great book and it was talking about all of these things about how important listening is. And what was really amazing was how many women uh, fessed up to the idea of um, how often they rehearse what they're going to say, you know, or how they, you know, before the person stops, like you're rehearsing, so you're so not present to what they're saying. Or this one woman said, I'm older. I keep thinking if I don't interrupt them, that I'm going to forget. <laughs> so it's like, well, how present are you if you're thinking you have to keep interrupting them to say something? But you know, in all of my uh, all of my women's retreats, the thing I say the most is you are seen and you are heard. And I have everybody, after anybody says anything, we all repeat, you are seen, you are heard to that person. So of course I had to make it into a little chant. You are seen, you are heard, you are loved for who you are. You are enough, you are complete, you are loved. Sing that with me. You are seen, you are heard, you are heard, you are loved. You are loved for who you are. You are enough, you are enough, you are complete, you are complete. Our love. Now put your hands over your heart. Give it to yourself once. Just say, I. I am seen. And I am heard. And I am loved for who I am. I am enough. I am enough. I am complete. I am loved. Do that one more time as a prayer to yourself. I am seen. I am heard. I'm loved. I am loved for who I am. I am enough. I am complete. I am loved. And I am loved. So I'd have to say, as much as in my teenage years, I was so geeky and everything, and I just had so many issues about who I was. I have to say that that's probably the seed that my mother planted just very deeply in me that I was loved, even though I fought it and I didn't see it until much later in years and years and years of therapy. Thank you very much. But that I was seen. And I see someone here said, you know, the, the phones and electronics take that away from us. And it's so true that, that we always have that, like, you know, our binging little phones but I, I say to you with this lesson that she taught me, let's all make a commitment today to just be that much more present with people. You know, put your phone away. You know, give it, give it a break when you're talking to someone. Just silence it. Do whatever you need to do to just be present because it truly is the best gift that you can give someone. The other thing that she taught me was be true to my heart and trust my uniqueness. Now, I'm going to do something that I can do here on screen that just, uh, this is very vulnerable to show you this, but I'm going to, that when I was in junior high school, as I've mentioned a few times, I was a little bit of a geek. So let me see if I can have you see this. So here I am in ninth grade 
just look, do you notice the hair? Do you notice the straight hair? Do you notice the color? Let's not even talk about that. But the straight hair that God forbid it was foggy in Los Angeles and my hair would rise like yeast. It was back in like 9,000 bobby pins and barrettes and everything so that you couldn't tell that it was curly hair. And do you love how it's, you know, full set of braces and like I'm smiling completely, you know, like, hi there, look at me. So I want you to know that my mother loved this. I also wanted to, at one point I said to my mother, how did you let me walk out the front door like this? What was your problem? You know, and first of all, don't sit there and go, oh, you poor thing, because you know, you all have the same picture. Okay. You do know that, right? But the thing that was so fabulous about that time period when I'm just struggling and I'm just feeling like such a spazzy, geeky kid is that my mother kept always saying, you're unique. The talents and the gifts you have, you might not know them now, but at some point, and you know, the famous one, I'm sure some of you said this, at some point in your life, someone will love you. <laughs> someone there will be someone in your life that will fall in love with you. You know, it's like, really, mom, really, that's going to happen. But the other thing that happened for me at that time, not only is she encouraging me that I'm okay, but I also had this fire in me that I wanted to just be this, you know, who I was. And I'm this ninth grade kid and I'm just, you know, wanting to show who I was. And I saw something, and this is the first inkling I had of wanting to do music. I saw the Hollywood High Drum Corps and I thought, I want to be in that. And David, if you want to show that picture, my mother encouraged me to audition and try out for the Hollywood High Drum Corps. And this is me in my little outfit. Thank you, David, for putting that up there. And I also love this. I need to let you know that those hats that uh, people would put beer bottles in there so that when we would do away games, people would like take their hat off and start doing beer. But here I am with my little drum. Thank you. I think that's all we need to see. But my mother encouraged me. My mother said, you could do anything. And this is after I had gone to the music department. I had gone to the head guy and said, I want to do this. And he said, girls can't play drums in the Hollywood high school band. And I came home to my mother crying because I just, for some reason, thought that this was my path. And she said, you can do anything you want. You could do anything you want. Oh, what is that line from, oh, uh, that movie, you is good enough, you is smart enough. Who knows that one? Um, the, the maids, the one that's, it's Olivia's. Uh, oh, the uh, help. The help, thank you very much. And she's saying to this little good, you is smart enough. You, and that's what my mother implanted in me that you can do this. And so when the, you know, when the high school drum person said you couldn't do it, it was like, hell, I am going to do it. And I studied all summer long. I learned how to read music. I learned how to put that damn drum around me and march for hours. I would just go up and down my street. And the big pinnacle of my life was being in the Hollywood High School marching band on Christmas Eve when we did the Hollywood Lane Parade and I was there marching with those guys and I was just so proud of myself. And my mom said, I knew you could. I knew you could. And well, let me, see. she also taught me this lesson. I don't have to be perfect. I'm doing the best I can. I give myself permission to be just who I am. I don't have to be perfect. I'm doing the best I can. I give myself permission to be just who I am. She said, you don't have to be perfect. So you screw up, you mess up. It's okay. You go for it. And that's something I think that's so important for all of us. Whether we had someone tell us that or we tell it to ourselves, we don't have to be perfect. We can just try something. We can just go for it. The other thing she taught me, by example, was to honor your creativity. Now, as I said, she was a working mom. She just had all this, you know, she had this real schedule. And yet, my mother, when she was in the last days of her life, she died of cancer in uh, 2003. She was in a, uh, in, a, uh, in a home that they were taking care of her hospice. And she loved to paint little figurines. And the day before she passed, she was barely speaking. And my sister and I were with her, you know, 24 seven, we were just there with her throughout this whole process. 
I remember I said to my mom when she said she was scared of dying, I said, mom, you brought me into this world. I'm going to help you go out of it. And the day before she died, she motioned to my sister and I, she's not talking now. She motioned that she wanted to get out of bed. And we're kind of going, well, what does she need? And she motioned for us to get her paints. And we're just, we're not knowing what she's doing. But she was working on a little figurine of a Santa Claus. And the only thing that was left were the boots. And so she got up and she painted the boots of the Santa Claus. And so this is probably one of the most sacred things that I own. You know, if we were having a fire, this is probably the first thing I would grab. And she painted the little boots. See the little boots. She painted this. And she got back into bed and she died the next day. And she just taught me to honor. Like she needed to complete that. She needed to complete that that part of her creativity. And I think she gave me permission to honor that part of myself. But I think one of the main things she taught me was to be able to nurture myself. Now I will be honest with you and say, I'm always working on this because I teach women's retreats. I do talks about this. I'm one of the last people to really know how to do this for myself. And I think that's why I teach it. But she taught me about how important it is to see what it is you need and give that to yourself and to not look to other people or her to give that to you, to, to give that to me, to be able to see inside, what is it that I need right now to be happy? What is it I need to be fulfilled? What is it that I need? And I think that was being good, a, a good parent where she started to cut the ties with me of saying, don't look to me to fulfill you you know, to help you. I will always be there to help you, but learn how to be gentle with yourself when you're having a hard time that you can nurture yourself. And that's really one of the main things I want to give to you today in this talk is the idea of allowing yourself to check in with your heart and be gentle with yourself. And this, this little chant, I want you to sing with me. You know, I, I was beating myself up for something and, you know, I just heard in my mind, be gentle, be gentle. And what came out was, I will be gentle with myself. I will be gentle with myself. And I will hold myself like a newborn baby child. So imagine that. Imagine that you're holding yourself. You're mothering yourself. I will be gentle with myself. Gentle with myself. And I will hold myself like a newborn baby child. Sing this with me. I will be easy on myself. I will be easy on myself. I will be easy on myself. And I will love myself like a newborn baby child. Let's affirm and say, I am gentle. I am gentle with myself. I am gentle with myself, and I love myself like a newborn baby child. So the other night I was having a really hard time. I couldn't, I couldn't fall asleep. And, and what was really amazing was I just instinctively just started to put my hand over my heart and rock myself. And it was really interesting. I want to, I want to give this idea to you because when you're beating yourself up, when you have that inner critic coming in and just slamming you for, you know, whatever. And that, how, I mean, am I the only one? Does anyone else have an inner critic here? Or should I just move on through this? Okay. <laughs> that when you can allow yourself to nurture yourself and in this time when I couldn't go to sleep and my mind was racing, I just started to go, it's okay, little one. It's okay. You're doing fine. You're doing the best you can and acknowledging myself and all of a sudden, I could feel this wave of just, ah, uh, with all the meditation that we do, it's breathing into that place of just saying, it's okay. I will be easy on myself. It's okay. So I want to just, um, boy, time goes fast when I'm with y'all. I could go for like another hour. 
oh, I am going to do that at 5.30, but, <laughs> but I want to just have us acknowledge ourselves and acknowledge whoever in our, in our mind's eye today is, is giving you that mother energy. Um, and just say thank you. Just acknowledge that person. Um, if it's yourself, give it to yourself. For all the ways you touch my life, I honor you today. You're an angel in disguise. And so I say, thank you. Every day you give your heart and everyone can see it. Loving grace is who you are. And I can feel it. So sing this with me and just say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Always oh, say thank you, thank you. So I want to give you homework this week. I want you to think about someone you want to thank in your life. It could be your mother, but it could also be someone else that nurtured you in any way. And call them. You could call them today, but you might even want to just think about it. You could be any time this week, anyone who comes to your mind. Because the truth is, when we acknowledge other people, we're acknowledging ourselves too. You know, there's a woman at a church that the way that she has her gratitude ritual is that she will call 20 people on her list every morning, 7.30 in the morning, and she calls them up and she sings a Karen Drucker song to them. She'll call up and go, hi, Irma, thank you for this day, Irma, thank you for, and she'll just sing one of my songs to them. They all, they all said to me when I came to this church, she's 85 years old, this is her ritual. They all just said, you just know you don't answer the phone in the morning because she's singing to you. But this is her way that she gives out love every day. And that's what I think this world needs so much of. Because when we nurture others, it's the best gift. When we listen to others, it's the best gift. When we say thank you, it's the best gift. And when we say thank you and acknowledge ourselves, that's the best gift. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Say that to yourself. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I'm going to give you one more addendum to this homework. Now, you're going to do it for someone else, but now I want you to do it for you. Sometime this week, I want you to do something really nurturing for yourself. Acknowledge the mother in you. Acknowledge the nurturer in you of all that you've given to the world. I mean, Julia Cameron says, take yourself out on an artist date, something that's really different and fun. Buy yourself roses, go to a, get a massage, whatever it is. Can you do that? It's probably easier when I said, give it to someone else, but do it for yourself. One thing, you might even want to put that in the chat, what you're going to do. You might inspire someone else. I say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I thank you for listening to me today. David, thanks so much for having me. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you.